Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center. I'm Paul Farball along with Bill Bruning. We'll get to the starting lineups as soon as we can. Kentucky Wesleyan in tonight, number nine in the nation against IPFW. Kentucky Wesleyan, the prohibitive favorite. And right there, the bucket and one. Starting it off, we'll run down the lineups for you. Kenny Green with the bucket. This is a veteran Kentucky Wesleyan lineup. Michael London, double zero, six six, starts at one center position. Mike Willis Cheney, excuse me, Willis Cheney is the point guard. He's an All American candidate. He is number four. He's five ten for Kentucky Wesleyan. Is Green gets the bonus after the bucket foul on Ryan Bond. Finish the starting lineups for Kentucky Wesleyan. Thirty three. Peter Van Altena is a forward. He's six nine. And 25, Rafe Young, 6'3", the other guard on the outside for Kentucky Wesleyan. A veteran team, 12-3 and three coming in, 6-1 and one in the conference. This is Jason Whirling from the outside, missing. Rebounded out of there, falls in Willis's hands. He walked. Got away with it. Second bucket of Kenny Green, 5-0. Only 30 seconds in. This is Glidden from the corner, missing. Rebounded out. Ducky Wesleyan on the push. This is Willis Cheney. Ryan Glidden, number 10, going to draw the assignment tonight. Missed by Green. Rebounded out of there. Marcinic comes up with it. Loses the dribble. Now bad to Marcinic. Well, IPFW comes in. Two-game losing streak. Kentucky Wesleyan, the opposite end of the spectrum. Two-game winning streak. Last beaten by Southern Indiana. Pretty handily, too. 117 to 83. But they are in first place, the Great Lakes Valley Conference, tied with Southern, 6-1 record. IPFW looking, now with nine on the clock, whirling down the baseline, now to Bond. Bond swinging outside, Marcinic lets go for three. Don't know if that was by design, Bill, only two on a shot clock. Right, that was just a force to get it off before the horn. And you'll see a lot of that. Rafe Young with a three. Kentucky Wesleyan shoots 16 plus threes a game. And they also make quite a few of them, 43%. That's third best in Division II in the nation. 8-3 the score. Just about two minutes in. This is Glidden working on green. Down low. Dane Adams with his start. Loses the ball. Now up with it in the corner. Covered up by green. Swing it outside. Marsnick with a pull. -up. Michael London, first rebound for him tonight. Cheney on the push, looking ahead to Van Altena. Glassing gets his own rebound and two. We're just not boxing out at all. Ten to three. And obviously that's on the coach. IPFW Andy Piazza's mind right now. Timeout, 17-49. Kentucky Wesleyan converting each trip down the floor. Difficult assignment tonight. Kentucky Wesleyan brings a lot of size, but they also have speed on the perimeter, Bill. And Willis Cheney might be as good as there is in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. He's averaging uh, almost 20 points a ball game. 19-7 coming in. They have five players in double figures. Average 89 points a game. IPFW, well, they average about 74. Right now, they do have to find a way to get the ball in the proper offense. Coach Piazza said their last two games they shot under 40%. Both games out rebounded by 10 each game. Well, we played some bad defense so far. We got Green with two easy shots underneath. He got fouled on one. Van Alten had just got an offensive rebound and, and an easy shot. So there's three shots right there, right underneath the basket. And it comes from pressuring the point. Ryan Glidden is on Willis Cheney at the outset. Might have to see something different. I don't know how Glidden matches up speed-wise with Cheney. He's a good one. Now, they do have a Cheney. This Cheney uh, name uh, from Evansville, and they don't list the high school. So he might indeed be related to Calvert Cheney. Michael Cheney, we'll get a look at him probably later on. He's number 20. He does come in off the bench. Scores 10, uh, won a game. I believe he's a cousin. So we'll, we'll check on that, get that ironed out. This is Marcinic over the timeline now. Kentucky Wesley and man to man. Coach Wayne Boldinghouse says 99% of the time. This is Bond with a flash. Rejected. 
Michael London got a piece of it, rebounded out by Kenny Green. Now quickly, Rafe Young for the pull-up. There's another offensive rebound and a putback. Just too easy right now. You might see the big bodies coming in soon. Casey Runyon and Jason Burkhardt for IPFW. Bot on the outside. 12 to 3 the score. Just three minutes into the contest. Kentucky Wesleyan making it look very easy. Bond away with a walk. Give the assist to Glidden. 12 to 5. It's a nice pass, though, even though he did walk. Mismatch Kenny Green. Green goes 6 5 on 5-8 Russ Marcinek. So I'll look for that matchup all night. Peter Van Alten have rejected out of it's there. Another offensive rebound. That's a toe, two. Toe on the line, Van Alten have missing. There's another offensive rebound. That's got to be four or five already in, in just over, uh, not quite, well, well, three and a half minutes. Uh, Bill, they did the best thing. They got a jump ball, got right. down on the floor for it. This is Glidden now, 4-3. I think they gave him a two. Toes on the line, 12-7 the score, and a turnover. Rafa Young couldn't control the outlet. So as good as Kentucky Wesleyan has been, IPFW has a chance to pull within three or two here. 12-7 the score, just over 16 to go in the first half. Marcinic on the dribble. And there's Glidden this time behind the line. Now he's got. Oh, how they have missed that the last two games. Doesn't look like they're going to come out on him yet. Oh, they're just popping him off the elbow. And inside misses. Another Van offensive Altena. rebound. Dean Adams is going to pick up the foul. Dean Adams just a freshman getting the start tonight. That is the second team foul that will send Peter Van Altena to the line. Quite an international lineup. Michael London plays for them, but he's a, he's from North Carolina. Peter Van Altena, though, is from Holland. Another guy you might see a little later on comes off the bench. Seamus Merriman is from Ireland. Van Altena hits the first, has the bonus. Got a nice roll on that. 14 to 10 IPFW trailing Marcinic with pressure has five to get it over the timeline. And Glidden now sticking on the outside. Glidden with the ball. Got to get out on him. Kenny Green decided to back off and Glidden makes him pay. I can't believe they're going to let that happen anymore. Glidden second three pointer. Eight straight points for Glidden, but the roll going back the other way. 16 13 Kentucky Wesleyan, and they don't take much time off the clock. That's Cheney's first bucket. Inside, Adams stripped by Cheney. He's got numbers 2 2. Green up ahead, stripped by That's Glidden. Our ball. Off of Green. Our ball. That's a good call. I think any time Cheney has even numbers, it's a plus advantage for Kentucky Wesleyan. Seven assists a game for number four, Kentucky Wesleyan. Russ Marcinick, sees Adams popping out, looking inside. Bond not free. Cheney's not really that big at all. He's listed at 154 pounds. Well, they list Russ Marcinick at 5'8". That might be true. Glidden coming in with the rebound off of Bond's knee. He lists Cheney at 5'10", and I don't think he looks Marcinic in the eye. Yeah. Russ is actually heavier than he is, though, I think. <laughs> and Glidden drawing Cheney. Inside, blocked by Adams. He rejected out of there. Bond with a clear. Bond being chased from behind, goes coast to coast. 16-15, IPFW crawling back in this one. Down at 1.10 to 3, Coach Andy Piazza taking the timeout. Eight straight points from Glidden, but Willis Cheney with the answer. That's a two-pointer, 18-15, rather. Right? 
Let him missing from three, rebounded out, tipped to Cheney. Come on. Cheney again has numbers better this time, three on one. And Van Alten a foul by Glidden, just missing. Substitutions now for IPFW number 33. Is Steve Sanders, freshman from Greenwood, Indiana. Multiple substitutions for Kentucky Wesley, number 44, Artist Cleveland, number 34, Lorenzo Connor. Both are forwards, both big bodies. Michael London, double zero, coming out. And Van Altena has two foul shots. them both 20 to 15 five point lead for Kentucky Wesleyan this is Sanders with the ball down to Bond Bond spinning we have push on Van Altena that is the first team foul mark it down at 1333 627 gone by for Kentucky Wesleyan picking up the first foul and here is Michael Cheney. He is a cousin of uh, you know who. Guy playing for the Bullets right now. Ben Altena coming out. Fresh shot clock. Marsnick inside. Kyle Kirby in. Oh, we got away with a foul. Second time, no. <laughs> Kirby comes in and uh, gets a little loose, commits a foul there, grabbing some arm. 14 foul on IPFW. And now a switch. This is Jason Whirling on Cheney. And Whirling comes out of there with a the board. Whirling on the push. Cheney kick. Reset the clock. So Glidden comes out. Whirling moves over. Sanders now will draw the assignment down low. And Sanders has got good skills for a freshman. He can spot up, hit the jumper. He can also do some damage down the low post. Very good post-up man. Ryan Bond getting a screen, going baseline, missing. Coming back up with it, getting the board and two. Right there, they miss Michael London on the defensive boards. Might get him back in the game rather quickly. Kentucky Wesley, and this is Cheney on the outside. It's Renzo Connor with the ball. Knocked out of there, knocked back. Kentucky Wesleyan, everybody getting a hand on the ball. I believe if you're Kentucky Wesleyan, put it in Cheney's hands, let him create off the dribble. Chris Kemp into the ball game. He's triggering. This is Connor. And here's Cheney. Now Sanders on him, a mismatch somewhere, if he can find it. Well, that might be a mismatch. That's too quick. Just too quick. A little fake, and he was wide open. 22-17. Sanders fouled after the three-pointer doesn't go. Rebounded out of there by Artis Cleveland. Ooh, what a pass. Sanders will pick up the foul. It'll be a two-shot. For Lorenzo Char or Connor, rather. Substitutions for IPFW. Glidden back in. Jason Whirling will get a rest and down in the paint. J.B. Showalter, freshman out of Connersville, in for Ryan Bond. Misses them both. He normally shoots at a 63% clip. Still a five point lead. Sanders skip pass. Glidden wide open. Hits Kirby in the head. Now Kirby working underneath. Still the ball on the floor. Now Kentucky Wesleyan out with it. And Cleveland uh, 
Had a bus ticket to Cleveland that time. Puppy dogging over half court. Gets the easy lay in 24-17. 11.40 to go in the first half. IPFW trailing all the way in this game. And Marsnick feeling pressure. Got the bailout. Cleveland got rewarded for being lazy. <laughs> hey, it's two in the book. You know? <laughs> That's right. I thought he was going to dunk it, actually. He got caught in between steps, didn't he? Decided, yeah. oh, I just do a finger roll here. Need a good possession this time down the floor for IPFW. Showalter outside Sanders into the passing lane, knocked away, but Marcinick up with it. Cheney is very, very fast. That was a good decision on Marcinick's part to let the ball go in the backcourt because he was just about to touch it, and that would have been over and back if he had gone to get it in the backcourt. 20 on the shot clock. Marcinick, the only senior on this IPFW team. And Coach Piazza said before the game he has got to exhibit a little more leadership. The younger players did not play particularly well against Lewis. Kirby on the baseline. That's a 35-second shot violation. They should have gotten that. That ball was tipped on the way up. Tucky Wesley controls. This is Cheney. And it's just too easy for him right now. Pump fake. Got Glidden up in the air, and he's doing a little woofing at Glidden right now. Jason Whirling getting set to check in for IPFW. Hip check. Chris Kemp, number 11. That is only the third team foul in Kentucky Wesleyan. Ryan Bond also getting set to check in. Marcinick will come out, and Ryan Bond in for J.B. Showalter. Got a little bigger lineup in there now. Whirling's going to move to the point. And uh, he's been the leading scorer the past few games for IPFW. Connor picking up the foul. Glidden will have two. You don't want to leave your feet on defense on that play. Of course, as soon as he went up, Glidden went right into him. Substitutions back in the game for Kentucky Wesleyan. Kenny Green, 23 and 44, Artist Cleveland in. So IPFW does have a little bigger lineup than Kentucky Wesleyan right now, but do they have an answer for Willis Cheney? Lydon now with half the points of IPFW. Nice roll on that. Shooter's roll. A shooter's roll. <laughs> well, he put it up there awful hard on the front rim. Thrown away, playing center field, Ryan Bond. Up ahead, this is Sanders missing. And Green out of there with the board. Now Cheney on the push. They use it for Kemp, yeah. and Kemp travels. Blame that one on Cheney. Cheney laid the ball out there for him, and Kemp. Might had have surprised right him a little his, bit. Yeah, had a man right in front of his face. And nowhere to go. 27-19 IPFW trailing. Glidden popping out inside. Kirby can't handle it. Not touched, going the other way. We've only had three players score so far. That doesn't help. Glidden's the leading scorer right now with 10, is that right? Yes. Just got it over the timeline. Three seconds to spare. Young misses. Another offensive board. Michael Cheney will be going to the line for two. The bigger lineup's not helping us on, on, the de on our defensive boards. It's pretty simple. When you play a man defense, you block out your man, and Kentucky Wesleyan is just beating IPFW to the glass. They have inside position. I think we're fronting their guys in the post. So it's real easy to have position if your defender is right, so if on you're, your backside. If you're fronting, then you've got to have help side to That's block, right. block out. 
makes one Michael Cheney. Put it up to nine, 28-19. Glidden with a pump fake, leaves it for Bond. Got away with a travel in the lane. Just Bond and Glidden are really scoring. Marcinick hit a three early, and that's it. First three of the game. This is Young for three. Thirty-one twenty-one. Kentucky Wesley and nine twenty-five to go in the first half. I'm Paul Farball along with Bill Bruni. And Steve Sanders, a freshman with a three. A very young floor, or <laughs> young floor, yeah, it's a young floor out there. It's just an old floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a young team on the floor for IPFW. Ryan Bond might be the senior man out there. He and Glidden, that time Green lining up. Three true freshmen, Ryan Bond, a JC transfer from Vincennes, and Ryan Glidden, a transfer sophomore from St. Bonaventure. Follow doesn't go by Sanders, ripped down by Cleveland. Cleveland's put together pretty well. He looks like a ball player. There he was going for the board. Kirby trying to block him out underneath while he was in the air. Goes 6'6", 210. That's some wide shoulders. He's gotten bumped twice. I'm glad he's going out. I think he wanted a little payback time. <laughs> well, they really lose a lot. They bring Peter Van Alten in, and he goes, uh, what, 6'9"? 6'9", 215. <laughs> And the beat goes on. 33-24. Whirling outside. This is Sanders off the dribble. Has his man in the air and hit it. Steve's got five points now. He's helped us. Sanders is the leading scorer for IPFW in Great Lakes Valley Conference action. Turnover that time by Kemp. Scoring 14 a game. He's really come on. And he's not shy about shooting it either. No. If you're a shooter, you shouldn't be shy. Ryan's got this. Bond oh. left wide open, misses. I think he anticipated a little more defense than he really got. This is Young missing. Glidden getting the rare board. Defensive end. Whirling now. Looking to push. Inside Kirby, double teamed outside Glidden. And Green rebounds the three miss up ahead. Bond slow getting down the floor. That entry pass was too easy. Michael Cheney makes him pay. And Bond has had trouble with the right ankle. He rolled it a couple of weeks ago. He picks up foul number two. That is the seventh team foul on IPFW. Kentucky Wesleyan 741. The rest of the way in will be in the bonus. J.C. Runyon just entered the ball game. First time Runyon has been in. He's a junior. From Fairmont, Indiana. There's a good look at Cheney. Home of Fairmont, James Indiana. Dean. James Dean. And you know James Dean was a, a, a basketball player. Was he really? Oh, yeah. He played on a sectional championship team when he was a junior, believe it or not. I'm not making it up. It's true. I don't All think... Right. I don't think he's known for his basketball abilities. Glenn with a putback. Now, now uh, the, the proper segue would be when Casey Runyon flops after a charge attempt, then you boom, hit him with that. You know, okay. Seven point lead for Kentucky Wesleyan, 35 28. This is Cheney down the lane, loses dribble. Young now going to give Cheney to reset. 13 on the clock inside Van Altena. Missed an easy shot. Well, you're fronting the man. You shouldn't be able to lob it in there like that without any help from the backside defense. Got away with it, though. Now Adams. Dean Adams back into the game. First points for him. And it's a five-point lead. So IPFW sticking around. Remember, this is number nine Kentucky Wesleyan. Getting a little more scoring. Instead of just Bond and Glidden. And a turnover by Van Altena. 
I'm not so sure that was his fault. He thought that we are going to have a cut to the basket, and he passed the ball, and the player came back outside. Right, he thought Cheney, Michael Cheney, was going to cut down low. Cheney wiggled back down. And, and Cheney would have had a layup, I think, if he had cut down. Ben Elton is 6'9", running the point from out there. Glidden on the dribble, Cheney knocks it away, now lays off him. Glidden popping, missing. And Kenny Green out of there with the board. So another chance for IPFW to cut it close as they've been. Rafe Young lights up another three. He's got three of them. Well, he's the guy that shoots him 103 in 15 games. Quickly, what is that? Uh, Almost see. seven. Seven. I don't teach math, though. <laughs> you don't teach math? No. Well, if we have some philosophical, you know, problems out here, you can take we'll, that we'll over. We'll solve those. Okay. Eight-point lead now. Sanders trying to solve. Rafe Young from the outside. 15 on the clock. This is Runyon now. Adams popping out. Wanted Sanders. Now gets it to him. Sanders baseline with seven on the clock. Marson it. Got to go up with it. Now we're going to get a four shot here. Come on, Casey. Runyon drawing air that will go the other way. That will go the other way because of the shot clock expired. What that do they shouldn't call even be they're, alternate they're, possession. Well, they're having a discussion. If the jump ball was before the horn or not. That's what the ref's saying. Jump ball was before the horn. Well, now that's a bad call. Well, that's what he said it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's a good call for IPFW. I thought the buzzer went off about the same time, so the alternate possession, IPFW, does get something out of it. And we're going to lose the ball anyway now to get the, uh, the ball in the alternate possession. Next time, a help ball to Curtis. And another turnover. Sanders had it. Cheney knocked it away and out of bounds. Closest IPFW has been since an early 10-3 lead, 12-7 and then 35-30. But they've been hanging around. Kentucky Wesleyan just applying the pressure. They oh, and a foul on Cheney. First foul on Cheney. Can't believe he found the man out there that far. Didn't right. Feel, taken by surprise a little bit there. Kentucky Wesleyan looks Come good on the Dange. offensive end. This is whirling for three, missing. And London out of there with another rebound. Up ahead, Cheney with the assist. Van Altano with a bucket. And the lead back up to double digits. 40-30 inside the lob to Ant. Adams, Marcinet spotting up for three. It's kind of tough when a guy 6'9 is leading the break down the field, uh, floor on the wing. Rafa Young missing. Adams pulls down the board. IPFW another shot to close here. Seven point lead for Kentucky Wesleyan. Marcinic on the dribble. This is whirling down low. Runyon. Almost stripped, working against Van Altena. Runyon's hurt. Runyon is on the ground. Might have flipped an ankle. He indeed did. His right ankle. I think Sanders got the basket. It's five points. Cheney recognizing that Runyon half speed right now goes right over him. He's still hurt. Well, Ryan Bond on the bench for IPFW with two fouls. He runs on that a little bit, it might be all right. Stop and go by Whirling. Marcinic now, 15 on the clock. There's Whirling popping out. Adams trying to swing down. Sanders underneath. Assist, Whirling. Five points again, IPFW just keeps hanging around in a travel. Should have taken the shot, I think. Kenny Green knows it, shaking his head back down the floor. Casey Runyon will come out Kyle Kirby in for him. 
3.05 to go, 42-37. Once again, this is as close as IPFW has been since the early going. Whirling, this is Adams now. No threat to shoot. Sanders might. Instead gives it up, Marcinic. Now, Adams with the roll. And the bucket. High pick that time set the top of the lane by Kirby. Adams read it perfectly. And now it is as close as IPFW's been. Three points at 42-39. Cheney missing. Van Altena with the board. What do we have here? They're going to shoot two. That's the 18 foul, so another offensive rebound, too. Whirling coming out, Lydon in. Michael London, double zero. Out. And Van Altena misses the first. Last week, Great Lakes Valley Conference, 21 plus points a game. Ball goes out of bounds. They won it over and back on that one. Nice pass right off the dribble. Cheney blocked by Adams, but Adams giving a little push on the hip. Adams picks up his second foul, so the big men for IPFW getting a little bit of foul trouble right now. It's coach of Andy Piazza, eighth season here at IPFW. Cheney hits the first. He's trying to turn things around. Last year, he had a very rough year, 8-19. This year, he has a young team. Uh, highs and lows. Beat Northern Kentucky just last week. Also beat an Indianapolis team. Both teams in the latest polls. Kirby now missing, getting the own follow, his own follow for the basket. 45-41. This is Young outside, 4-3. Van Altena crashing, no foul called. Adams working for it, and it is off of Adams. Another offensive rebound, and, and this probably is a team rebound on the tip out of bounds. Well, substitution for IPFW trying to cure that. 6-7 Jason Burkhart. Country. That's his nickname. Country, huh? Country. Not, not big country? Big country. Country. I guess it depends on how well he's playing. If well, he's playing he, well, he's big country. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's had a little problem. He is anemic, and they just found out about that. Inside, that's Michael Cheney pushing the lead back up to six. So he's been a little slow. He hasn't been getting as many minutes on the court. Hard to come back from that. He's dropped about 15, 20 pounds. Lidden outside, covered up by Van Alten. Tries a tough pass to Kirby. Turnover. Cheney on the push. This is green for three. And I think he'd be well off not to shoot that as often. Although he comes in hitting 39%, so I guess he does shoot that. He's the third leading uh, shooter on the team for Kentucky Wesleyan. We're still not in the bonus with a minute and 10 seconds to go. Just the sixth foul on Kentucky Wesleyan. Surprising for the number of offensive rebounds they have. This is Marcinic with 20 on the clock. Litton popping out. And it's a three point lead 47 44. IPFW hanging around. Kirby, a mismatch. Cheney shakes. 
Missing, but there for the board, Kenny Green. We're just not boxing out. Shot clock is off, 20 on the game clock. Marcinic going to pull it out for the last shot of the half. Now 10 on the clock. Seven. Marcinic looking, Marcinic looking. Glidden popping out for three. And no foul call, rebounded out of there by Kentucky Wesleyan. That'll do it for the half, 49-44. Well played first half for both teams. Coach Andy Piazza, he still in the ball game, was worried about his younger players, how they would react this week. It's been a tough week of practice. Kentucky Wesleyan, well, you're up by five, but playing well, and you're only up by five. Uh, too many offensive rebounds and sometimes not real good low post defense, I think. Otherwise, it would even be closer. Maybe even we'd be ahead. Okay, we're going to take a break right now. We'll be back after halftime. Take a look at the stats. Watching Channel 6. verändert sich sehr schnell. Die Veränderung ist sehr schnell. Die De plus en plus, nous deviendrons tous partie d'une communauté internationale. Tout le monde aura une opportunité pour former partie de ce changement. Si il y a une langue commune dans le monde aujourd'hui, cette langue serait changée. Sometimes évident. Sometimes hidden, it is nonetheless constant. And when viewed through the eyes of the world, this change can be wide, sweeping, immediate, and profound. Yet when viewed through a different set of eyes, through the eyes of a child, this change can be personal and at times bewildering. Consider a child from another land whose family has come to Indiana brought by an international company or organization to America's heartland. For this child, a changing world is felt at a personal level, a level of new language, atmosphere, customs, and new friends. There are more and more children like this one throughout the communities of Indiana. Part of the promise of the years ahead is that there will be many more. The coming international era, it has been called an era in which local economies, institutions, and industries around the world merge and interrelate to an extent far greater than ever before. It will be an era when Indiana's place in the world may depend upon the ability to remain open to the world around us and adjust our ways of thinking and acting. Recently, a group of citizens from around the state, representing many walks of life, came together to form the International Issues Task Force. A group formed with the purpose of determining and enhancing Indiana's ability to thrive in an increasingly international environment and prepare recommendations for the future. In part, the task force considered issues related to the Indiana business community but their scope extended much further. 
Because at the heart of all changes are people. And closest to people are basic human issues. Issues that directly affect our ability to work and participate in an increasingly international atmosphere. With this in mind, the task force identified four primary areas of investigation. An international school, international service organizations and communications, international transportation, and international education. Each topic was studied by a separate committee, with ongoing staff support and administration provided by the Indiana Humanities Council. The intent of each committee was to determine how to best prepare the people of Indiana to become more valuable and productive citizens of the world community. The International School Committee investigated the feasibility of establishing an international school in Indiana, a school which would serve the needs of Indiana children by creating the opportunity to learn in a unique, world-class educational environment. A school which would also serve the needs of the children of foreign business people, students, educators, researchers, and other visitors to Indiana. As the business of many Indiana companies becomes increasingly global, the need for an international school becomes ever greater. Because at the center of the needs of any family is the education of the children. Another task force committee investigated the statewide delivery of international services and information. Indiana is home to many different international service organizations. Yet a study commissioned by the Lilly Endowment revealed a need for these organizations to work more closely together. The task force committee investigated the needs of international employees and their families, foreign students, researchers, and the professional spouses of international executives to determine if services were readily available to international families. For example, foreign families often need special assistance in adapting to their new environment, obtaining driving licenses, learning where and how to meet American friends as well as other foreigners, and generally learning about a new culture. The committee also investigated ways to raise the consciousness of the people of Indiana by providing opportunities for exposure to international cultures through these service organizations. The committee then explored ways to best coordinate, fund, and deliver these needed services to international families as well as Indiana citizens. Central to Indiana's ability to be a vital part of a changing world is transportation. And a task force committee was formed to investigate the possibilities for increasing direct air transportation from Indianapolis International Airport to overseas cities and markets. Many Indiana companies, as well as international business people and visitors living in Indiana, currently need direct air service overseas. The committee not only studied this issue, it developed a strategy for pursuing greater levels of service international transportation, an important way to more directly link Indiana with the world. The mission of the first three committees was investigating ways to make Indiana even more hospitable to foreign visitors, executives, employees, and families. The fourth committee investigated ways of preparing the youth of Indiana for the international era by studying the present educational system. The committee evaluated the teaching of world geography and culture, world history, foreign literature, and foreign language in an effort to assure that Indiana students are provided with the knowledge and the skills to succeed in the international era. In many ways, the intent of the task force has been to provide a cornerstone a cornerstone from which the state can begin to build and prepare for the future. A future that is rapidly approaching for businesses, for organizations, for families, 
and for all of us. It is up to us to shape our place in the international era by learning the language of the world, the language of change. The International Issues Task Force has provided an important first step for the people of Indiana. A step toward becoming citizens of the world and making countrymen of all humankind. How can you find out when lightning may strike? And how do you count the fish in the sea? How can you tell if a child is growing normally, if baseball is getting better, or traffic is getting worse? How do you know about stock market trends, I believe the risk of learning cholesterol, is making the history of witchcraft, or the future of spacecraft? I believe with statistics, learning is that's how. And how can you find out about statistics I learning with the new statistics creative. series, Against All Odds? I'm Children are the largest group of Americans living below the poverty line. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child and you change the world. two millennia, Western society has generated a rich visual tradition of painting, sculpture, and architecture. What do these images mean? How can we understand them? Art of the Western world will take you on an exciting journey that will suggest answers to these and other questions. Beginning in ancient Greece and ending on the brink of the future, it will examine many of mankind's most enduring artistic achievements. That new dummy cam is great. Yeah, it'll sure give people a whole new outlook on what it's like when you don't wear a safety belt. I think they'll get the picture. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Sports Center on the campus of IPFW. I'm Paul Farball, joined by Bill Bruning. And seen good first half, Bill. Kentucky Wesleyan out in front by five. And take a run down at the stats. Shooting's pretty even, but there is a huge disparity in the rebound column. In the rebounds, they have 25, including nine offensive. We have 14. There's also a big discrepancy on free throws. IPFW has made just two. They've only attempted two. On the side, Kentucky Wesleyan, well, play that physical game you're going to go to the line more often 11 of 15 that's been the difference right now in the first half three points shooting IPFW 6 of 13 Ryan Glenn 3 of 8 Marcinic 2 of 2 Steve Sanders 1 of 2 Ducky Wesleyan 4 of 10 Rafael Young 3 of 7 
But the biggest problem for IPFW is finding someone to guard Michael, or excuse me, Willis Cheney in the second half. We've got three problems. Rebounds, <laughs> Cheney, and free throws. I, I think I think if you eliminate Cheney, you might have a little success in the other two because Cheney just gets the ball to people and gets that IPFW defense scrambling. It's a real quiet 13 points. He took seven shots. He made five. And he is only credited right now with two assists. But I tell you, the Coach Piazza before the game said, this guy, Cheney, is going to get everybody else started. And you see it. Rafael Young cannot get a shot off on off the dribble by himself. He relies on Cheney to get him the ball off the penetration. And what Cheney does just fuels everybody else's game. Kenny Green has been doing it underneath in the paint. Cheney's too fast for anybody that we've had on defense on him so far. Um, just a little head fake or a ball fake, and he's open. Haven't seen uh, too much this uh, first half of Jeff Jackson. Might he get a start in the second half? Defensive assignment because IPFW goes with a man defense, and right now the only person who has been any type of uh, slowing effect on uh, on uh, Willis Cheney has been uh, Jason Worling, the freshman out of Woodland. And, and Jason uh, didn't have a good game offensively. He missed both of his shots and hasn't scored. Well, of course, uh, Jason Whirling, the leader of the last two games, scored 12 apiece in uh, the Lewis game and also against, I uh, have to look that up, against St. Joseph's. IPFW had a problem shooting in both those games. They're shooting much better this game, but it's the rebounding factor. And they match up size for size, but they're just yeah. not playing as physical as Kentucky Wesleyan. We gave them an awful lot of easy baskets in the first five minutes on offensive rebounds. Um, Actually, both of us, I think, are surprised that the stats say only nine because they had three right. or four and five maybe in the first five minutes. Also, cruising down the stats, we'll just run the points for you down while we have the time here. Kenny Green of Kentucky Wesleyan, 11 at halftime. Michael London, no points, but he had three rebounds. Rafe Young, nine. Of course, Willis Cheney with 13. Michael Cheney, cousin of Calvert, with five. And uh, Peter Van Altena with nine. Van Altena was player of the week in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. 21 points a game, nine rebounds a game, two games from last week. For IPFW, Jason Whirling mentioned no points, zero of two shooting. Dane Adams, six points. He got the start tonight. Six points, not a normal product, uh, a very productive night for him, not normal for him to get that many points early on. Ryan Bond had eight. Glidden leads all scores with 15 points. Russ Marcinick has six and five assists. Kyle Kirby with two and Steve Sanders with seven. Actually, our assist to turnover ratio is quite good. We got 12 assists and six turnovers, and, and Kentucky Wesleyan has nine assists and eight turnovers. Well, that's one thing Coach Piazza was looking for. Russ Marcinick played a lot against Lewis. I don't know what his minutes were. It wasn't 40, though. I know that. Coach was not too happy with him because he had zero assists and four, four turnovers. So... Uh, Tonight, doing a much better job taking care of the basketball, five assists, and just one turnover in the early going. Big question is, who is going to guard Willis Cheney? Starting five out on the floor for IPFW. Ryan Glidden, Jason Worling is going to trigger the inbound. Russ Marcinick and Dane Adams. Kentucky Wesleyan, Artis Cleveland, 6'6". Six, six, gets the start in the second half. That's the only difference from the starting lineup to open the game for Kentucky Wesleyan. Cheney is out guarding Russ Marsnick. This is Bond now looking for Adams slicing through. Ball tipped by Cheney. We got a foul. And instead they're going to call the foul on Cheney. He's got a little hand with it. Second foul on Cheney. First team foul. And he fouled Adams and that shows you how Pack they're in on the defense in the paint. New shot clock. This is Marsnick now with Rafa Young on him. Young goes 6 3, Marsnick 5 8. Glidden now bond with the ball fake down the lane, rejected. Cheney out of there with a the push. Now one on one against Whirling. Cheney changing the shot. Almost got it to go. This guy's tough. Yeah, he's tough. He used his body to protect the ball. Had his body between the ball and uh, Jason Worley.
Jason jumps pretty well, but he, he hit him on the way up. Third foul on Jason Worland. And so that might upset the plan on the defensive end for Coach Andy Biazza. Cheney hits the first. It's a lot like a guy named Keith Jennings. A couple years back, played for Middle Tennessee, I believe. Knocked away, stolen back by IPFW, back-to-back -back turnovers. 51-44. Kenny Green laying off Glidden. Glidden looking down, runs some clock, runs some offense. Inside, Marcinic going down low. Thought the better of posting up Cheney. High Archer doesn't go. Bond with a put back foul. Maybe bailed out. Cheney picks up number three, so perhaps that's the best way to get him out of the game. But again, why is he down in the paint guarding the big person? There's two fouls. One was. He fouled on Adams cutting through and now on uh, Vaughn on the rebound. And Cheney waving to coach Wayne Boldinghouse. He knows the situation. Only 113 gone in the second half. He picks up two quick fouls. Vaughn makes the first. It's another look on replay. See Cheney just uh, trying to flick the hands out. Bond gets the bow. I don't think Marcinek's going to score too many points on running hook shots in the paint. No, I don't think so. I mean, that's a playground shot. You make that one on the playground, they're not going to give you much. <laughs> they're not going to give you much credit for it. Van Altena. Young back to Cheney. Whirling's guarding Cheney right now. And both players with three fouls. It's a five-point lead. Van Alten down the lane. Finding Cleveland. Cleveland missing. And Bond out of there with the board. What do we have? Foul on Cleveland. Cleveland beside himself. Might have been one pass too many there. I think it even surprised him. Cleveland on the shot. Wide open. Can't believe he missed it. You never missed a wide open shot underneath the basket? He did? I said, did you? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're up here. <laughs> I never got the ball underneath the basket. I never got in the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would have liked to miss one underneath. Five-point lead for Kentucky Wesleyan. IPFW has been in within three before, 47-44. It's like they're playing a zone now, 2-3. And this is the 1% of the time that Coach Boldinghouse talked about when they change defense and that time good for a turnover. I think that is the first time tonight that I recognized it at least. Well, they picked up three quick fouls in under two minutes. They may be trying to protect Cheney a little bit for a while. Right, and that's one way you go to the zone, get away from individual matchups. Now Glidden's on Cheney. And Glidden does not have the foot speed to stay with Cheney. He picks up the foul. It could be Coach Piazza's going to switch every couple times down the floor, give uh, Cheney different looks. Well, he might run out of players. That's Glidden's second foul. Marcinic has no personal fouls, so he's got something to give if he wants to go after Cheney. 51-46. Marcinic's guarding Green, and Green is 6'5". Well, right. he switched again. And Green has not beat them from the outside tonight. He does take three pointers, and that's how you get them down low. Posts up. Cheney with the assist. Who scored that one? That was uh, Kenny Green. Glidden missing for three. Young out of there with the board. Layup. Dunk. The high hander by Van Altena. He runs the floor. Remember, he had a breakaway in the first half. Nine for Van Altena. Adams alone from 10. Can't get it to go. Cleveland out of there with the board. Glidden tries to save. Can't do it. Oh. 
And this is a point where IPFW, if they're not careful, might slip away right here. Nine point lead for Kentucky Wesleyan. One, two, one pressure. Van Alten ahead for a three, decides to pass it up. Inside, that's Cleveland for the easy basket. We got back uh, too late on the on our press. It was too easy for them. Van Altena picking up the foul. It's just his second foul. Cheney made that long baseball pass to Van Altena, and he looked like he was going to shoot, and then he put it inside, and, and we just didn't have enough people back. It's 14 foul on Kentucky Wesleyan. IPFW with two. Trailing now by 11, 57-46. This is Whirling now looking for Bond. Bond baseline. He walked. Ben Cleveland with a block. Think looked to me like he walked when he reverse pivoted. That's the daily double right there. Cleveland with a rejection, too. Whirling for three. That's his first basket of the night. Back down to eight points, green. Skip pass over to Young. Young looking back inside. Cleveland wide open. Bond got lost on the screen that time. Work, lean, missing. Glidden tipped that one out. Ten-point game for Kentucky Wesleyan. Cheney breaking the pressure easily. Green, no look. Ahead to Van Altena. Glassing doesn't go. Whirling out of there with the board. Now to Marcinet. Three on three. Glidden, 4-3. Four three-pointer of the game for Glidden. 59-52. Young breaking the double team ahead to Van Altena. What a nice outlet. 6-9. You can throw it to him anytime. Van Altena down low. Adams lost sight of him. That was a rebound foul. He got it. About a, a count late. Oh, Van Altena should have had that one off the glass. Sure Wide should. open. Could have taken a dribble. Gone up strong. Substitutions now, Kyle Kirby in the game. Ryan Bond coming out. A little bump for Artis Cleveland as he leaves. I want to keep an eye on that matchup. Cleveland coming out. Kenny Green out. Peter Van Alten out. So the subs are in for Kentucky Wesleyan. Michael Cheney in. Whirling. Driving baseline. Glidden again. 4-3. And rebounded out of there by Young. This is Cheney. Cheney knocked away by Kirby. Also back into the game for Kentucky Wesleyan, double zero. Michael London. He didn't score in the first half, and he started. He comes in the game averaging 10-1. Cheney working baseline, nowhere to go. Off of London's hands, Marcinic now trying to push. Stop and go, Young covers up. Here's Glidden now. Want to try and push it down underneath. Adams not getting good low post position. Swing at this side. Now Adams with a dribble to the glass. And it's back to five. At one point it was 11. 57-46. That's Connor. Connor breaking pressure for two. That's his first basket. That was just a, too much of a floater for across the court. You got to whip that ball. Steve Sanders' first action for Sanders in the second half. Jason Whirling getting a momentary blow. Expect him back in the game to cover up on Cheney. Wesleyan's back in the zone. Good entry pass. Kirby with a finish. Just Glidden. And it's back to five, 61-56. And Marcinic picks up his first foul, team foul number three.
Barsenek now drawing the assignment. Sanders there for the double team. Cheney dribbles right around it. Outside, Young finds Connor open in the lane. Back tip by London. Now Young re-triggers for Cheney. Another offensive rebound. London with the board blocked by Kirby. Going to have a held ball. Going to go Kentucky Wesleyan's way. I don't know if London was unhappy with the call or unhappy with himself. Or maybe both. Working down in the low post, half position. Kirby came from the backside, got a piece of it. That's the other Cheney. Yeah, the other Cheney. Michael. Should have never gotten the ball in bounds position if you're the defensive team right underneath the basket. Back up to 7, 63, 56. Kentucky Wesleyan. Skip pass. Glidden open. Decides to pull. And Cheney out of there with the board. Looking ahead. Turnover. Marsnick into the passing lane. Up ahead to Glidden. Should be a lay-in. It is. Twenty now for Glidden. He leads all scores. It's back to five. Getting set to check in. Jeff Jackson. Ring it for Connor. 66-58. That's a three. Connor's got five and did not score in the first half. Ryan Bond getting ready to check in for IPFW. Adams from 17 misses. They're back in their zone again. That's more than 1% now. Young wide open. Knocked down. Is it after the foul? I think we're going to... After the oh, shot, he's, po he's pointing to the side. It looks like it's going to be out of bounds. It's going to be... Uh, out of bounds. After the shot, so Young did come down. Is it after the foul? That's, that's a good question. Is the foul after the foul? So Kentucky Wesleyan will inbound. Michael London coming out. Van Altena back in. And the Kentucky Wesleyan fans, there's about 200 of them in the stands here tonight. The official pointed right away that it was going out of bounds. Right. They, they just didn't see him do that. Coach wasn't upset with the call. He asked about it, but I don't think he was upset. Jeff Jackson in the game for IPFW. He's on Cheney off his foot. And now a turnover. Jackson with the ball stripped back away. Jackson, I think, got fouled. Michael Cheney juggling act. What was Calvert Cheney's number at IU? Oh, geez. Tough question. No, it shouldn't be. Was it 20? <laughs> oh, man. 40. Okay. 40. Jackson wide open and missing. Rebounded out of there by Connor. Kick and reset. Marshnick with a foot in the passing lane. Okay. Do you want to play trivia time? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What was John Leskowski's number? Um, five. I don't know. Was it? I don't know either. <laughs> I was guessing. I don't know. I. I remember seeing Leskowski play at South Bend St. Joe. Timeout. Kentucky Wesleyan up by eight. 11.28 to go, 66-58. And this is the first time we've had a chance to tell you about the College Cable Access Program Guide. It provides information about our program, including IPFW Sports Telecast. Receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide. Send your name, address, and zip code to there on your screen. Channel 6 and IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. You can always call us at 481 6000. And uh, if you have any suggestions on how we can improve the telecast, I'm sure dropping the announcers <laughs> is probably <laughs> high on the list. Well, if yeah. we're going to do trivia questions, one of us ought to know the answers. Well, I was just going to ask you did they, did they have Laskowski's name on the back of his jersey or was it bench? Um, Although he did come off the bench. I believe he was sixth he, man at 75. He did at IU, but he was at South Bend St. Joe with uh, Abernathy at the same time. I think they were probably a year different. So South Bend St. Joe was very, very good with both of them up there. The 
Ryan Glidden using the timeout on the IPFW sidelines to do a little handiwork. Retaping an ankle, getting it taped back up. It is Kentucky Wesleyan basketball up by eight with 11.28 to go. Kentucky Wesleyan coming in number nine in the nation, 12 and three. Lost their first two games of the season. Got on a roll, won nine straight. Make that 10 straight. This guy's come in off the bench and starting to look for a shot. Let Lorenzo or Connor. We're third. even on fouls now. Third foul on Kirby, too. So the big men starting to rack up the fouls for IPFW. This is his second. Bond out of there with the board. Kirby down at the low post. Now Bond swinging. Jackson. The offense really looking discombobulated right now. So they're playing that zone. Well, matchup maybe. Oh, a good look inside. Bond to Kirby. Cheney was looking to get back outside and that quickly they got the ball in. Flashing Bond up the free throw line. Kirby is down the low post. He played primarily a finesse type. Uh, he traveled. He's got it. And we do have a travel on Connor. But Kirby played more of an outside game down at Marion for a team that went the final 16. Jackson inside using his body. Van Alten up picking up the foul. Jackson found where Van Altena was at, jumped into him, and we'll have two free throws. Chance to cut into a seven-point lead. That's Jackson's first point. Well, they moved uh, Jeff Jackson from me. He played a little point last year, just wasn't clicking there. They moved into an off guard this year. Only a sophomore gets them both. And the lead is back to five. IPFW has not been able to get any closer than three this game. Breaking the press. Oh, he got hit. Jackson got the with basket. the foul. Ring it for Cheney and one. Connor with a pretty pass. That one's worth another look. Still have not put it up on the scoreboard. 69-62 and Cheney with the bonus. And Coach Wayne Boldinghouse wants the bucket counted. And it is finally up on the scoreboard now. 70-62. It's one of those crucial times now. We've got to play hard and not let the game get out of uh, hand. Good look. Every time down, down by eight with 10 minutes to go, almost thrown away. Sanders retrieves. Sanders now with a look inside, skip pass. Jackson open from 18. Four straight points for Jackson, back down to six. And the press not bothering Kentucky Wesleyan at all. Cheney right to the basket can't get it to go Sanders out of there with the board we got a kick and a reset for one second difference yeah it's a good thing they reset that clock yeah. Cheney wide open shot a little too much action on the finger roll yeah I think he put a little too much mustard on that one he didn't need it Kenny Green coming back in the game Rafa Young coming out Young has been quiet this second half had nine in the first, all of them from three-point range. No points in the second yet. And we're over halfway done. This is Sanders. Bad pass. We got lucky. Kirby back to Sanders. Now 4-3. And Bond out of there with the board. Kick out to Marcinic. Down the lane. Back to Bond. 4-2. That was a nice play on Marcinic's part. Drew the defense to him and passed off. 
Bond has 12, and the lead is down to four. 70-66, 9.20 to go. Kirby knocked that one away. 22 on the shot clock. So each time IPFW has been down by eight or nine or ten points, they've come back. They, they have. Keep hanging around. They're, they're playing pretty well. The closest they have been, though, is three points. And that was right before halftime. Marsnick gets a hand on it, saved inside. Chaney to Green. Green now on the baseline. No three-second call. Out to Chaney, and the IPFW bench can't believe that. Chaney nailing a three. Chaney now with 18. Lead up to seven. He walked. Double team back to Kirby. Bond, the assist man this half. I think Sanders walked on that. It's a five-point lead and a five-second count. Nobody came back for the ball. Kenny Green released. That's one of those things that could really swing the, the, the game in one team's favor. There's no, no excuse for not getting the ball in in five seconds. It's a giveaway turnover. Bond knocked out of bounds. Sanders hits the three. Bond three assists the last five possessions. And it's a two-point game, 73-71. Jackson's on Cheney. He's the fourth player that's guarded Cheney. Cheney missing and Kirby in there for the foul, I believe. That would have been another offensive rebound without the foul. Is that on uh, Kirby? I think that's his fourth. It is indeed four, and it does put Kentucky Wesleyan in the bonus. That hurts because Kirby, once he gets the ball down there in the low block, does go to the paint with it. Yeah, he's got six points this half. Dane Adams in the game, and Michael Cheney on the line for a one and one. Long rebound, Marsnick trying to come up with it. Cheney controls. Getting another shot again. Out to the other Cheney, 4-3. Oh, what a big swing. Cheney with back-to-back -back killer three-pointers, just like the knife buried deep. Each time it looked like Kentucky Wesleyan was scrambling, Cheney bails them out with a three. The lead is five, now Adams in trouble. Shoot Inside the to Bond. And Green with a foul. Two shots. I think we're too hesitant. You're 6'7", and get the ball down there. You go up and make them foul you. In traffic, Bond had a little trouble controlling the ball. Here's another look on the replay. Oh, he just got hammered. Pump fake didn't, didn't do much the first time. Second one got Green up. That's Green's first foul, but both teams in the bonus here on in. Both teams with seven fouls. Bond with two at the line. Ooh, misses the first. Another look again. Couldn't see from that angle, but he did grab a lot of Bond, Bond's arms. Misses them both. Quite obviously, when you're trailing, you can't afford to miss those free throws when you get a chance to put some points on the board with no time going off the clock. We're under eight to go here. Five-point lead for Kentucky Wesleyan. They've led throughout. Inside Marsnick, fronting Green. Green covered up. Cleveland missing. And Jackson out of there with the board. Jackson now wanting Adams. Bond with a head fake. Going to the hole. Cleveland with a foul. Let's hope he gets both of these. Ryan Bond coming into the contest, 71% free throw shooter. Here's another look down low. Ryan Bond, 6'7", out of Southside High School. Went to Vincennes last year. 
Awful competitive down at Vincennes. Wanted to do something other than play basketball. Got tired of basketball last year. Came back home. He stepped into a starting role here. He has 14. Is that right, Bill? Yeah, I have 14. 14 points on the night for Bond. Almost a turnover. Cheney retrieves and breaks the pressure. Has numbers up ahead. Green spotting for three. Bring it. Three straight three-point baskets by Kentucky Wesleyan. Each time IPFW has closed the gap, they have answered. Is now 79-73. Inside, Bond doubled on the baseline. Off the foot of Artis Cleveland. Substitutions for IPFW. Jason Whirling back in and Ryan Glidden. Both can hit the three. Jeff Jackson coming out. Russ Marsnick getting a brief respite. Glidden's been out for quite a while. Are you saying his uh, shooting arm is cold, or is he going to be uh, well I hope, I hope it's warm. <laughs> Sanders loading and missing. Rebound. Adams got a piece of it. He got the last piece out of bounds. Will be Kentucky Wesleyan ball. Let's see who's going to guard Cheney now. That's been the question all night. Rafa Young coming back in, number 25. Coming out, Lorenzo Connor. He picked up the score in the second half, six points. He only averages six per game. Michael Cheney. He's got 10 points, and he did not start. Green now, Bond on Green. And Glidden is on Cheney. Rafa Young popping out from 18. Bond covering up, down low to Van Altena. And that's the fourth foul on Jason Worley. We've had some defensive switches down there that are just killing this. Marcinick on somebody 6'5", now Jason Worley, who's 6'1", on Six, somebody 6'9". Yeah, that's... That, that might work when you're outside the uh, three-point arc, but it's not going to work when you're down in the paint. And it won't work on a guy like Van Altena because for as big as he is, he's got really good ball handling skills. And good shooting skills. Until he bricked that one. <laughs> Marsnick getting set to check back in. 80 to 73. Steve Sanders coming out, so Whirling still in the game. 6-14 to go with four fouls. We're back to a somewhat shorter lineup again. A very short lineup. Bond 6-7, Dane Adams 6-7 are the big players out on the floor. Skip pass dangerously. Glidden. The Whirling now Marsnick. Wesleyan's in the zone. You can tell they don't play it a lot. Cheney looked a little lost out there. They're going to force IPFW to beat them from the outside. See if Glidden can. I think that arm's fairly warm. It's starting to get warm, and I'll tell you what, he won't hesitate the next time down the floor. believe that is Glid Glidden's sixth three-pointer. We'll have to check the stats for you afterwards. I'm pretty sure it is. He's got 23 on the night. It's Van Alten and now off the dribble. Adams can't do anything except lay a hip on him. And that's the 19th foul for IPFW. Two shots for Van Alten. So the three-point shooting, actually the shooting overall, IPFW has done it from the outside tonight has kept them in the game. We've been shooting quite well. We were 6 of 13 in the first half from the three-point arc. And Van Alten uh, finding the rhythm a little bit. Adams with his third foul. Did bump him a little bit on the chest. Casey Runyon coming in for IPFW as Van Alten hits them both. He has 14 points now. And Adams is just a freshman. He'll learn from this. Let's see if Casey's uh, ankle is okay. Flipped his right ankle early on in the first half. Had to come out. This is Whirling from long range. No. And Cheney out of there with a rebound. Willis Cheney. Just over five minutes to go. Glidden still uh, guarding him. 
which means Marcinic is on somebody 6'5 again. He's guarding Rafael Young. And he only gives up, oh, seven inches to Young. This is Green on the dribble, using Whirling. Whirling has four fouls, and Green going right at him. So Kentucky Wesleyan has some good matchups. IPFW is going to have to do it from the outside. Cheney picks up his fourth foul. Hey, that got the uh, Wesleyan fans in the game. They think uh, Glidden pushed off. Well, Glidden was a bit out of control. Cheney stepped in there, got his feet set. That's his fourth foul, too. It would be nice if we could get him to pick up a fifth. Well, he'll be on the floor regardless. Only 4.39 to go. Right. Perhaps you do have someone try and work him. I'm sure, though, that Cheney is going to slough off on his defensive end to make sure he saves the offense. 84-76 to score. We'll be right back. That, uh, save that promo a little later. IPFW women did win tonight, however, against Kentucky Wesleyan. As Glidden hits the first to cut it down to a seven-point lead. And the bonus. Six-point lead, 4.39 to go. IPFW the pressure, Rafa Young. Back to Cheney. And I would take Cheney one on three about any time to break the pressure. Young now gets it over the timeline with just two seconds to go. Young loading up from 25, doesn't get to go. Van Alten out of there with the board and a fresh shot clock. Young has not scored in this second half, but you have to look and be wary of him from three-point range. His arm might be sore after that shot. Almost all his shots have come from far out. Cheney now with 15 on the clock. He could take Glidden anytime he wants. Young popping out for another three. Missing badly. Young rebounds, but he was on the sideline, end line rather. Young says he was pushed. He might have been. I believe he was. Runyon might have hipped him out. Six point lead now, 357 to go. And IPFW has stuck around this game the entire way against number nine, Kentucky Wesley has been a good performance for the Mastodons, win or lose. Marsnick now trying to get something set. Whirling, popping out the other side. Three not there, covered up by Green. We got a break there. Should have been a turnover. Now back to Marsnick with 10 on the clock. Marsnick penetrating. Runyon! Missing and Green out of there with the board, and he is running. Possibly double dribbling. Now this is Cheney going to settle things down and run some clock. 22 on the clock. Just over three on the game clock. Oh, oh wait, way too easy. He can score whenever he wants. IPFW coach Andy Piazza wants a timeout. He was just beneath the foul line and he was wide open. 86-78. And you can bet Kentucky Wesleyan's strategy the rest of the way home is going to be put it in uh, Willis's Cheney hands. And let him create. We'll be Eight right. point lead for Kentucky Wesleyan. We'll be right back.
The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team in this year's competition. Welcome back to the Hilliard Gate Sports Center on the campus of IPFW. I'm Paul Farball along with Bill Bruni. Like I mentioned, Pat Bowden's team winning earlier tonight, 67-58. High point lady, well, there were five players in double figures for Pam Bowden tonight, led by Lindy Jones with 18. Leah Sheets, the freshman from Columbia City, had 14, along with uh, Tara Muzillo, 14. She's a sophomore out of DeKalb High School. Jenny Newhart, 11. Wendy Recker, 10. And those are the five starters. All right, no one else scored. Well, for IPFW, the men's team right now, long way to go, eight points down. They need the three-point shooting. Glidden knocked down, misses the three. Marsnick now That's with the a three. Hand. And Marsnick is a senior. Coach Andy Piazza called that timeout because Marsnick never picked up Cheney. After he got around Glidden, never helped out. Got right in uh, Marsnick's face. Well, they're going to milk the clock. Down to 12. This is Cheney. That's the plan. Van Alten, a baseline cut off by Bond. It goes in. <laughs> 88 81. now has to hurry. 2.12 to go, Whirling. Now looking for the three, not there. Marsnick covered up. They're going back. Now Cheney on him. They're playing zone right now. IPFW will have to beat them from the outside. Marsnick off the dribble, missing. Bond with the board, controls it. Back outside to Marsnick. 1.53 to go. This is Glidden, double team. Back out to Marsnick. Marsnick decides better. This is Whirling for three. He's got six points on two threes this half. And it's a four-point lead. 138 to go, 88-84. IPFW desperately needs a defensive stop. Both teams with nine personal fouls, so the next foul will be a two-shot foul regardless. And this guy is dangerous. He has put on a show all night. Willis Cheney, they list him at 5'10". He's a senior. He's more like 5'7". And he plays like 5'7 with a jumper like he's 6'5. Can get it off anytime he wants. Connor foul by Whirling, and Whirling fouls out. There was just three on the shot clock. What a tough foul to give up. Kentucky Wesleyan blowing 32 seconds off the clock. And Whirling did get him. Well, we Once again, that entry pass just too easy. If we have a mismatch again. Connor 6'4. Weighs 185 pounds. Whirling, who jumps well, is 6'1", 175, and it's just real hard at this point in the game to have fresh legs. Whirling has played a good game tonight, just six points, but has done a good defensive job when asked to cover up on Cheney on the outside. Four-point lead, 109 to go. Again, both teams will be shooting two foul shots the rest of the way. That helped. Connor missing. Do you want me to say it again? Both teams will have two foul shots the rest Both of the teams. way. All right. Both teams will have two foul shots the rest of the way. And obviously, again, it is not idiot proof. On my end, anyway. Marsnick now trying to penetrate. On, Russ, there you go. Beats Cheney off the dribble. And it's a three point lead 89 86. IPFW needs a stop. That's not a bad foul. And Marsnick picks up his second foul, and he puts Connor back on the line. Connor, one of two. Going back to the line, 63%. He missed two uh, foul shots earlier. One up of the, the line. One of the reasons the NCAA, for men at least, put in this two shots at 10 was to avoid just what uh, Russ did because it used to be a bonus in hoping that they'd miss the first one. That's been in for three, four years maybe. There you see the ISO, only two seconds elapsed. 
for Marcinic. Put one in off the glass. 57 seconds left. And Connor hits the first. Oh, that might throw his rhythm off. Official threw it to him and he didn't look. Nice pass. Turnover on the official, I guess, huh? Bad pass. 90 to 86. Connor trying to push it to five. He does. Right now, you're in a situation you don't need a three right away, but you're going to need a three eventually. Uh, Thrown away. Marsnick with the air. Sanders was there. Rushed it. So Sanders was spotting up for the three, did not go for the ball. And Michael Cheney coming out. That's because he shoots just 51% into the game. Uh oh. Oh, he pulled back. He had two on one. Connor wants to get some more points from the foul line. This is young now. Five point lead, 40 seconds to go, 15 differential on the shot clock. IPFW is going to have to foul. Rafa Young, one guy they don't want to, but they're forced to. Bond picks up the foul. Young comes in, hitting 87% from the foul line. The best on the team. IPFW will take a timeout. 91-86 the score. Kentucky Wesleyan, your leader. Well, we need uh, a couple of missed free throws here. We need uh, a basket. And we need a defensive stop, and then we need another basket. Hopefully one of those two baskets is a three, or at least a, a two and a foul. 30 seconds left. Kentucky Wesleyan has some pretty good shooters in right now. Let's run down the free throw uh, percentage. Willis Cheney, 84%. Rafael Young, 87 Kenny Green, 80%. Peter Van Altena might be the guy you want to foul. He shoots just 68% from the foul line. He might be the best bet, number 33. Of course, Connor coming in at 63%, but he just nailed two. For IPFW, there's a uh, look at uh, Wayne Boldinghouse in his fifth year at Kentucky Wesleyan. Kentucky Wesleyan, if, if it sounds familiar, Rex Chapman's father, Kentucky fame, and becky has been a journeyman now in the, in the NBA. Yeah, Rex decided not to play for his dad, I think. Right. right? Coach yeah. went to Kentucky. Kentucky Wesleyan, uh, that's where Rex's dad coached at. He won national championships under Mr. Chapman in 87 and 90. It's Division II championships. They've won six overall. Brought a good crowd with them tonight. And all eyes on Rafael Young trying to put this one away. If he makes both free throws, it would put Kentucky wasn't enough by seven with 30 seconds to go. That's Rafael Young. I don't know if we've been putting Michael Brooks up there the whole night. Rafael Young. He missed. We're first, down six. First point of the first half for Young. 87%. Now Sanders lining up for a three. No. Marsnick with a back tip. Cheney out of there with the board. Sanders picking up the foul. This guy's potential All-American, the one at the line, Willis Cheney. Sanders picking up his second foul. 18 seconds to go. I have Cheney for 23. And he gets the roll. 93-86. Biggest lead of the second half for Kentucky Wesleyan was 11 points. IPFW had it chipped down numerous times to five and six. One point, it was three points, 89-86. Bond with a follow. 94-88, too little, too late. Nine seconds to go, and Young going back to the line. Six-point lead in hand. This can about do it. Young hits the first to three possession game now for IPFW. 
I suspect Wesleyan won't even play defense. Marsnick takes the ball right at the start. They're not. No fouls. Oh, that was stupid. On a three. Wayne Boldinghouse looking down the bench. <laughs> it's a good thing they're up eight. He turns to Artis Cleveland and asks, would you do that if you were in the game? Stranger things have happened. What was it? NC State came back from uh, eight points down, seven points down with 11 seconds to go. Way back when. Looks like Casey Runyon's got a big bandage on his face. I didn't see him get hit, but he's got something on his left cheek. Casey Runyon, that might be a mouthpiece. I don't. Yeah, That's what it is. He's sticking his mouthpiece <laughs> out. Sanders hits the second. He will have a, another one. Mouthpiece doesn't help too much when you chew on it. Although well, he's, I he's, tell you he's, what, I think this will, this will leave. He misses the third on purpose. Marsnick pulls out, puts up a three missing. Bond, it won't count. Are they, no, they're going to give it to him. They gave it to him. Oh, Bond does get it to go. Okay. Well, a little gift at the end there. 91-96, Kentucky Wesleyan. I was just going to say, I think this does leave a good taste in uh, IPFW's mouth, though. I mean, uh, to oh. struggle the past two weeks against opponents that frankly weren't of the caliber of Kentucky Wesleyan, come back here and play well and be in the game the entire way. We played well. Ryan Glidden, the leading scorer for IPFW. We'll try and see if we can get him on the floor afterwards. We'll be back right after this short timeout. First year IPFW women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska. She has inherited a club which returns no senior. The top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 730 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. Just do it. It's a cool place. Call now. Go to work, go to school, go ahead. In our ever-expanding world, we need a reliable source. One that addresses important aspects of our daily lives and provides us with useful information. Health and Home Report is that source. With stories on how to get the most for your money. Where to go for a great vacation. Hot fashion tips. What's happening in the world of arts and entertainment. And the latest medical breakthroughs. Health and Home Report provides a world of information. The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition.
We're back. Final score, Kentucky Wesleyan 96, IPFW 91. We at IPFW are pleased to be able to bring you cable cast of NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we are able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Uh, we've got to switch now to Paul. He's going to interview Ryan Glidden, our player of the game. Thank you very much, Bill. Down the floor with Ryan Glidden, player of the game. Ryan, 25 tonight. That's a season best for you. Also a team best as well. But you don't come out of here with a victory. Can this team feel good about this, though? Uh, we came in confident. I mean, we beat top 20 teams all year. I don't feel good about it. I mean, I think that down the stretch we should have won. We just key opportunities we just didn't we didn't capitalize on. And I, I'm I'm disappointed. I think we beat teams like these. I mean, they're no better than we are. It comes down individual to individual. So I mean, we just gave this one away. Well, you will have another chance Saturday night against number five Southern Indiana coming in here. But one of the things down the stretch, that guy Cheney, Willis Cheney, was pretty tough, and he seemed to be able to get a shot off when he needed to. Well, he's quick. He's uh, one of the toughest players I played against, D1 and D2, and uh, comes down to where he just hit all the shots. I mean, when he's hitting, he only missed probably two or three shots the whole game. Some guys just get into the zone. I'm sure he's not going to be like that every night, but tonight he was. So, unfortunately, it came down to where we just couldn't deem up that well. Things happen. What about positives, though, that you take out of this game? Because this team had been struggling from the field. Yes, you did get re out-rebounded again tonight, but the past two games previously didn't shoot very well from the field. Tonight, the team shot well, played pretty well as an overall unit. was the individual breakdowns. It was individual breakdowns. It was matchups inside, matchups outside. We didn't block out that well. We didn't get as many rebounds as we expected. Uh, our emphasis this week in practice was the rebound, rebound, rebound. We didn't, we didn't get it done tonight, so it came down to rebounds, and that's why I lost the game. Okay, a couple quick ones here. What about your game tonight? What are you feeling? Are you in a comfort zone right now? You're starting to put it together. What does this team have to do to beat Southern Indiana? Uh, individually, overall, right now, I don't think. I mean, tonight I shot some. You know, I, I hit a couple key shots, but I don't think I shot all that well from the floor, and uh, I wasn't really in a comfort zone at all. I mean, I, this was not one of my better nights, but. Uh, I think coming into the Saturday, I think we'll have a good chance. We'll be more focused. We we're focused tonight, but I think come Saturday we'll, we'll be a lot more focused and things will come out better. Okay, it was a loss tonight, but Ryan Glidden, 25 points, five three-pointers, IPFW coming close to number nine, Kentucky Wesleyan. Let's throw it back upstairs. Bill Bruning, wrap this one up for us. The telecast of this IPFW sports event is copyrighted in the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, retransmission, rebroadcast, or other use of this event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. Don't forget to tune in to Channel 6 tomorrow evening at 7.30 to see MIVA volleyball action as the Panthers from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee take on the IPFW Volley Dons. For Paul Fireball, this is Bill Bruning. Goodbye for now. <laughs>